Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. And today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. Today's topic is going to be on the methods in our classes. And let me go ahead and hop out into our database here and you can see we already have a couple of examples of methods in our class. And that is these two functions that we created, these two subroutines, class terminate and class initialize. These are methods, but they're internal private methods to the class, and they are not accessible to other parts of our application. That's because they have the access modifier keyword of private. So if I go to the form here, and I'm just, I've got this new contact instantiated here. If I try to do new contact and I hit the period, you'll see we get the public uh, properties available to us, but those methods the class initialize and class terminate are not available to us. So what can we do about this? Well, what we can do is in our classes, um, we can go ahead and make new methods. We're going to do a public method, which is going to be a subroutine, and I'm going to call it init. And we'll get into the reasons why I'm calling this init in just a little bit here. But I've got this subroutine called init, and in it, I'm going to go ahead and set the, the private ID value equal to 1, and I'm going to set the first name value equal to Mike. Okay? So let's save that, and let's go ahead and go to our form. And before I go ahead and run that, I just want to show you if I, if I run my class here, and then I print out the value of the ID from my new contact class object and I check out the first name of my new contact uh, let's see what the value is here okay I'm gonna clean out my immediate window here just so we have a blank slate here let's go to our form and run it and you can see ID is set to zero and first name comes up just blank alright so that's not really uh, going to help us much, right? I mean, we, we just have zero and first name because of our uh, our class initialize, our class constructor is setting the ID equal to zero, but it's not setting the first name, and that's why we get just a blank. But what happens if we go ahead and call that init method? Let's go back here to our form, and now new contact. We're going to go ahead and run that init method. You can see that it became available to us because we made it a public uh, subroutine here. It's a public method. Go ahead and clear out my immediate window here again, and let's see what the debug.print shows us now for the ID and first name. ID is 1, and the first name is Mike. That's exactly what we expected to see from a, as a result of running that init method. So that's good. And in fact, if you think about this, this can be expanded upon. This init method can be expanded upon to help us with our little problem of not being able to pass parameters to our class constructor. And the way that we do this is I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of parameters here, one called ID as integer and another one is going to be first name as a string so what that's going to do is I can all uh, they're going to pass in a parameter here they're going to pass in some arguments to these parameters ID and first name and then we can set those values equal to whatever the user passes in for a value alright so now let's go back to our form here and let's set some values here to pass in for our parameters. Let's go ahead and set it as 2 and Ross. Okay? So now we're going to run this init method, which has a couple of parameters on it. The first one, we're going to set the ID value to 2, and then we're going to set the first name value to Ross. And those, again, just so you can see this, just to reiterate, is going to set the value of our private internal property to ID, and our private variable here, first name, to whatever somebody types in for the first name, which is the second parameter. Okay, I hope you guys can see how that all flows together because we're using this init public method. 
All right, let's go back to our form here. Got our breakpoint set. Let's go ahead and open the form. And now we can see ID of two and first name of Ross. So that's exactly the functionality that we were hoping to see by passing in these parameters. Now, that's not the fullest extent of what we can do because there are some other things that we may want to do. Since we set those parameters in our init method, they're required. Okay, ID and first name are required, and if we try to just run this, we're going to get a problem. We'll get, if I try to compile this here, you can see argument is not optional. I have to be passing in those arguments of to and Ross in order for this init method to run properly. But what I want to do is I want to use this init method as a general rule of thumb as my class initializer, as my class constructor, so that every time that I have a new object, I have by default on my classes this init method that I know should be run after I create my class. Okay? It's just kind of a, a way that I go about trying to circumvent that problem of not being able to have my class constructor be passed along those parameters, because now I can pass in a parameter. And init is a good name for, um, for a class, you know, a pseudo class constructor, something that I am setting up as the class constructor. And if you just think about that, some other coder coming through after, you know, after I've coded this and maybe five years down the road, somebody looks at this and they see this init method, they'll understand what that means because init is kind of a, a, a simple, it's kind of a general universal understanding that init means initialize. All right, I've probably talked your ear off enough about that. Let's go ahead and let's let's modify this a little bit because we've got a bit of a problem. Since these two things are required, that makes it a little difficult. There's that that forces my user, whoever's going to use this class contact class, they have to pass in an ID and a first name. But let's say that I want my class to have some defaults. I, I could certainly pass them up here and you know make my defaults up here. That's certainly doable. But I kind of want to go ahead and do away with my class initialize altogether. I want to get rid of it. I don't even want to use this because if somebody sees this and they see this, they're not really going to, to know which one of these I'm using as my class constructor. I guess I'm tr just trying to eliminate the possibility of confusion. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of my class initialize, and I'm just going to have my init public sub that I plan on using as my initializer. So since I've done that, I don't have any default values here. And I could certainly, you know, take these out and set my public value my, my private values to zero and Steve, but then that kind of defeats the purpose. Now I'm back to well, why don't I just go ahead and do a class initialize and then force somebody to type this in? I want these to be optional. Okay? I want somebody to be able to type something in here or not type something in and use a default value instead. And luckily for us in VBA, there is the optional keyword that we can put in front of our parameters that allows users to just have the option of passing in a value. So I could pass in a value or I don't have to. And now what will happen is if I do pass in a value, then it's going to go ahead and set it. If I don't pass in a value, then it's going to use whatever the default is for that particular variable type, for that particular um, um, type. And in this particular case, ID's type is integer. And an integer, if you don't set a value for an integer variable, its default will be zero. If you don't pass in a, per, uh, a value for a string um, a, a string variable, then the default value of that string variable will be just a blank string. Okay. 
Now, that's something that will automatically happen. And if we just go ahead and save it like this, so that when we run our init, if we don't pass in a value, our default values that come from those value types, from the, from the data types, integer, which is going to be 0 as the default, string is going to be blank, I can run this init method and it will set those variables, set those values equal to the defaults of the type, of, 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 the, um, of the value type. So now what I'm going to get is ID of 0 and first name is going to be blank. Okay, so I don't have to put in a variable. I'm not forced to put in that value of 2 and Ross, but I certainly can. All right, so now let's go ahead and do that again. Let's, let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and set the init value of 2 and Ross, and let's see what we get for a result. ID of 2, first name of Ross. So that makes it completely optional to have a value in there or not. We can have a default or no default. But let's say I want to specify a default. I don't want to use the, the casted type value default. I want to actually set my default without having to have the user type something in here. Well, luckily for us, again, one of the great features about VBA is that you can do this by doing something like this. So now what's going to happen is if somebody passes in a value to this optional ID variable, then that's going to be used, whatever they pass in. But if they don't pass in a variable of a value into this variable, then it's going to just default to 0. Or to be even more clear, let's go ahead and set it to 1. And then first name by default will be Steve. Okay, so that's a great thing about using parameters is you can specify a default value by having the equal sign here or the assignment operator. Now this is what's going to happen. ID of one first name of Steve. All right and that's exactly the functionality that we wanted to see on this form. Let me go ahead and go back here so we can, I'm going to start with a clean slate here and we'll just see in this immediate window when I open it and run it, ID of 1, first name of Steve without having to have the user put any sort of variable in there. Now there are a couple of other ways that you can do this and this is the same thing with any subroutine or method, uh, subroutine or function. These are not explicit to methods on a class. If you do this optional and then assignment operator in your parameters. Um, you could do that on any sub or any function in your entire application. So what we could do is a couple of other ways that we can possibly check this. So this is kind of one quick little easy way that I like to do, but just for the sake of being thorough here, there are a couple of other things you can do. First, since you know that there are defaults from integer, which is going to be 0, we can do a little check. We can say if uh, id does not equal 0, then set the value of pid equal to id. So this is basically just saying, I know that the default of id, since it's a type of integer, if I don't set a value to this id parameter, I know that by default it'll return a zero since it's an integer. Then I can check to see what the value of ID is and I'll know if somebody doesn't pass in a value in there that the default must have been used and therefore I can go ahead and you know maybe set this value equal to, uh, well, well, we'll do something like this. So this is ID or else uh, P equals ID equals one. So that way we're basically doing the same thing as if I had just done this. Okay, that's exactly the same thing. Doing this equal sign one or having this if then else statement, which basically does a check to see if the default value of the data type uh, is coming up. Okay, and I could do that same, same with the uh, string value here. So if first name uh, does not equal a blank string, then go ahead and set it. 
else um, P first name is equal to Steve. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and end my if statement here. And that's one way to do it, but you can see there's a lot of coding involved here. Okay, that's doable, but like I said, I think this and this is a much faster way to do essentially the same thing that we're doing in here. There's one other alternative way, and you may actually find this if you do some research out on, um, out on the interwebs, and that is you can check to see if a variant is missing. Let me just comment this out here or take this all out. Okay, and this is the last thing we're going to cover in this video here. But if I change these from integers to a variant and set the string to a variant, then what I can do is I can check if ID is missing. Um, and I need to use the not. There we go. So that's basically saying, you know, is missing is going to return true if somebody didn't put anything in this ID. Um, let's just go ahead and set this here. If not is missing first name, then and end if. Okay, so that's another way we can do it, and then we could do that you know, then, oops, else, <laughs> let's do the right syntax here, Steve. <laughs> uh, if that's the case, then we want PID equal to 1, and since the, um, since the private variable ID is of a type integer, there will be this automatic conversion of the ID value. So even though it's being passed in as a variant, when it gets put into the PID variable, like we have here, uh, it's automatically going to cast that variant into the um, the ID as, as an integer. All right, Just kind of an a automatic conversion, an automatic casting that'll happen. And then we'll just do else P first name equals Steve. Okay, so that's an alternative. You could use the variant and then just make sure that you're applying whatever the the uh, the parameter is is being passed into another variable of a particular type and that will convert your variant type into whatever the type is of your private internal variable. So that's another alternative. But like I said, the new syntax being able to do this is just way, way more easy, uh, I think. Uh, than, than all that. And this really comes from some of the other coding languages like C Sharp and uh, VB.net that, um, that they've started to really expand upon and allow some more functionality. And they've carried that functionality over to Access VBA. All right, so there's a pretty thorough explanation of subroutines and functions which are called methods in your class objects. And I hope that that has helped you out. Remember, init is a good keyword to use if you want to go ahead and um, use it as sort of like a pseudo class initialize, a, a pseudo um, class constructor. You just have to make sure that you call it after you've actually created your class object. You have to, you know, after you create that class object, you need to go ahead and run that init function and then maybe go ahead and pass your, your variables on. All right. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.